Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is the Kano model, customer value and how to please your customers. So let's take a look at this thing. We're going to take a look at the Kano model. Which is all about Essentially, it's all about pleasing, all about pleasing your customers. So I'm going to draw a little diagram for you. It just explains what the KNL model is. So let's just uh, let's just pop this thing up. So what we're going to have is how satisfied, how satisfied the customer is. This end, of course, they're going to be dissatisfied okay so we've got a satisfaction scale in the middle here we've got sort of parity where they really don't care one way or the other and on this scale what we've got essentially is whether a feature or a service is present or absent so if you design something into your product or your service or you leave it out. So whether well, it's present or absent. Now essentially there are three levels of sort of customer satisfaction, three things that the customer's thinking, or in some cases not thinking to be fair. This, this isn't necessarily um, the obvious things that's in your customer's mind. And sometimes this is these these are important things in this KL model. So the first level of quality that a customer is interested in is basically the expected quality. The expected quality. Now this is just something that they expect to be there. They, they're not going to ask for it. I, I wouldn't buy the product without it. Um, so for example, these days expected quality. On a car, you expect four doors and you expect windows in the doors. Yeah, you expect it to be um, protect you from the elements. That's expected quality today. Once upon a time, if you look back at the Model T Ford, etc., I think it had doors, but it had no windows. Don't think it even had a roof originally. So nowadays, that's expected quality. We wouldn't buy a car without that. So we don't specify it. Now the problem with expected quality, the only thing expected quality can do is piss your customers off. So typically what you get here is this. You get this response from expected. So this is the expected quality. So if it's present, it's not going to satisfy. You're going to get a neutral response if everything they expect is present. Okay, so I'm not going to ask for this. It's just expected quality. If it's missing, you're just going to piss people off. The next one is the conscious quality, what the customer will specify. So this is the specified quality. Now this is going to please the customer. It's going to go through here. So this is the specified quality. So these are things that they're going to ask for. And again, if we think about if we think about the car, for example, there are certain things you can specify on the car. You might specify that the car has satellite navigation, for instance, that might be an extra. So you might specify that. You, may, you might specify that it has air conditioning. Yeah, that would be specified. And the more that you can specify, the more you can get these things that you want, the more satisfied you're gonna be. Of course, sometimes um, it's not like building a product like it is with a car, sometimes you can't get everything that you want. So um, sometimes when you're buying a house, you want location, you want four bedrooms, you want a big garden, you want the bedrooms to be configured in a certain way. And maybe you can only get four out of five of those. Yeah, so, but the more you can get, the more satisfied, the more satisfied you're gonna be. These are the things that we want and we consciously ask for, okay? And this will give you satisfaction if they're, if they're present. 
And the last level of quality, and this is where the power is potentially in your product or service. These are known as delighters. This is exciting quality, okay? Exciting quality. Now these are the things the customer didn't expect. Now if they're absent, the customer won't notice because they won't have expected that. But if they're present, this is known as exciting quality. If they're present, you can smash the competition out of the water with this stuff because it simply delights the customer. A really great example of a company that's got in the zone where they constantly delight us are these things. This is, this is the Apple iPhone, Apple in particular, consciously try to delight us. They tr consciously try to bring something out like, I don't know, the last time they upgraded, Siri was present. Nobody asked for Siri, nobody asked for the, for the phone to start talking to you and be your personal assistant. But they're trying to find delighters. They're trying to find exciting quality. Because if they find exciting quality, it smashes the competition out of the water. So there are your three levels of quality. Okay, and you should be trying to think about all of these. One of the things you don't want to be doing is when you try and do value analysis, you don't want to be taking expected quality away. Sometimes you see that in some services. They take something away that's expected. If you take that away, you're going to, you're going to dissatisfy your customer really quickly. Now, one of the problems with these three is how fast they change. Things that are exciting and delighters become, uh, eventually they will become expected. So as I mentioned, putting four doors and four windows on a car once upon a time, that would have been, that would have been a, a delighter. Now, it's expected. Um, just sticking with the car example for a second, <clears throat> the last car I bought, um, I didn't specify this, I didn't even know it was on the car. Uh, I had a hard drive for my music. Um, I drive an awful lot. Listening to music, therefore, is part of making the journey a little bit more um, enjoyable. And there was a hard drive, so I can put a CD in the radio. It will rip the CD and it will store it on the car and put the CD back in the house. I can put USB sticks in and it will take 20, 200, 300, 400 songs in a nice playlist. And then I can just play them, just on the hard drive. Now, when I got the car, that was just there. I was absolutely delighted. It was exciting quality to me. But now, now when I go and look for a new car, I haven't changed my car yet. And one of the reasons I haven't changed it is because now this thing's become a specified thing. I want a hard drive on a car. And if I can't find the car with that on there, I'm not buying it. So it's already moved down a level. And there'll be a point where it becomes expected. All cars will have them, like air conditioning is becoming uh, expected almost now. Um, so you have to be really careful. So because you have to constantly work, this is where you have to constantly work on the exciting quality. You have to do something none of your competition is doing. You have to do something that nobody's thought about. Give your customers exciting quality and you will blow the competition out of the water. For most of you, you're here, trying to do this well. So for most of you, what you're trying to do is to do the specified quality really, really well. And there's nothing wrong with that. We can't all be Apple dealing with new technology all the while. But if you can think of exciting quality for your customers, that is where you can make piles and piles of money. And that is the Kano model.